the way to look at it is the Earth is really a planet-sized chunk of fallout from a star-sized hydrogen bomb because without doubt our planet formed from the debris of a supernova that went off nearby and all explosions including supernovas are never complete and some of the nuclear explosive was left over hence the uranium that we <laughs> we've got on the earth I think the best way I can illustrate it uh, is this the collection of scientists around the world who form the intergovernmental panel on climate change are pretty good bunch and relied on by governments and everybody and they're very broad they include representatives from China parts of Asia as well as from this country and America it's no kind of bunch of fanatics or anything like that it's a very solid reliable body and uh, the chairman in the early days was Sir John Horton who was a director of the Met Office in this country so their predictions are to be taken seriously now if you go back to their very first report which was in 1990 at that time nobody was sure there was global warming and on page 253 of the report they say ask the question when will we know for sure that global warming is is with us and uh, they they decide that when the temperature of the world has risen half a degree beyond that then it'll be pretty well certain that global warming is with us and so they made two models one of which w used the most sensitive climate predictions and a business as usual attitude or worse uh, to see where we would be in the future and uh, they made a second model which was a bit like Kyoto as far as consumption went uh, and with an insensitive more or less traditional climate model now the second model predicted we'd be half a degree warmer by 2047 the sort of bad act model predicted that we would be half a degree up by 2002 what happened in reality was that we were half a degree up in 1999 so their worst model if anything under predicted and this is the picture we have now and it, should anyone doubt how bad things are go back and look at last summer in Europe there was an unprecedented heat wave which for scientists amongst you was five standard deviations beyond anything that had ever happened before for a whole three months period in Europe to utterly unprecedented and unexpected temperatures and almost unequivocally a consequence of global warming I regard that as the first real warning we've had of much worse to come the problem is this if you talk to climatologists and we we had a meeting recently of them in Devonshire uh, quite a sizable bunch about 50 of us got together to discuss climate change and the consequences and the consensus amongst them was that there's somewhere in this century there is a threshold rise of temperature or carbon dioxide for the the threshold is somewhere in the 400 to 600 parts per million of carbon dioxide and somewhere about 2.7 degrees Celsius in temperature when the global temperature rise reaches that point then the climate change becomes irreversible it'll go on warming up and the consequences will be with us for thousands of years and during them such things will happen as the melting of the Greenland ice much of West Antarctica perhaps also uh, which will rise sea levels uh, 7 to 14 meters a huge change in the whole map of the world the tropical forests will go uh, in the course of that thing re re reverting to a sort of deserty savanna like growth it'll be an utterly changed world that will not be able to support the population we now have the thing here is we have to think of our descendants are we going to leave behind us an utterly impoverished world because we were too slow too selfish or, or, or just too indolent to do anything about it we seem to forget that we live on a self-regulating planet and the, the comfortable climate that we enjoy is, is managed by the rest of life on the planet not by our farming ecosystems and if we 
take them all away to feed people, then the collapse comes even faster. National policies can be can important. I think, for example, the fact that this country is, is not adopting a nuclear policy sets a very bad example to the world, and I do hope that soon that that will change. I think we need nuclear power urgently and soon because of the fierce changes of global warming. Uh, we're not going to get by doing what we're doing. And so there won't be any opportunity for a slow drift back. The public are either going to have to like it or accept it. We could follow the Swedish model. There was probably no country more averse to nuclear power than Sweden round about 1990, shall we say. But they have swung po popular opinion right round so that there is now a majority in Sweden in favor of nuclear power. So it can be done. And that's a good model, I think. But I don't think we have time for that Swedish uh, uh, approach. I think it's got to be done by the government deciding that it, that it really is needed. I am sort of almost amongst the founder members of Green Thinking because I, I produced the instruments that, that validated Rachel Carson's thesis about the damage done by pesticides and so on. Um, and also, I first found the CFCs in the atmosphere and started that. So I've got some pretty good, strong, green, original credentials. But I've disagreed with the Greens all right from the very beginning because they are humanist. My concern is for the Earth. And I think that concern is vital for people because if we don't care of, take care of the Earth, the Earth will be unable to take care of us. And if we damage it, then, then we damage ourselves. And the Greens do not seem to understand this. They, they are obsessed with personal human problems. They are always frightened that something or other might cause cancer. And I think they, they've sort of looped themselves into this because the general public out there are very frightened of cancer. They've seen relatives die of it. And they know what an unpleasant disease it is. But... And so it's very easy to scare people by telling them that such and such a thing is carcinogenic. And I think the Greens have kind of sucked themselves into a, a rather false and uh, a bad position of using fear of cancer as a way of gaining support. Uh, actually, the, the real dangers come from the Earth itself and not from that kind of thing. Just look at, look at the world now. We are living longer than we've ever lived. And yet we all breathed in the dust of those enormous nuclear explosions that were tested in the Pacific in the 1960s. If the Greens had been even a fraction right, we should all be dying of much more of cancer now than we are. We're not. If anything, the rate has dropped. Um, they've, they've built up a kind of false story based on humanism. I, I say, look at the Earth. I'm not against renewables. I don't like windmills. I think in, in this small country, which is almost one large city rather than the country, our countryside that we do have is precious parkland and should not be devastated by industrial developments like wind farms. There are places for wind farms where they will be acceptable and harmless. So it's a case of horses for courses, I think. I'm not against renewables, but they certainly won't fill the gap of energy need. The Greens have got this idea that burning gas is only half as carbon dioxide productive as burning coal. This is true in simple schoolroom chemistry. But in practice, if you burn gas, the supply chain, right from the point of production, right the way to the homes where you burn it in, there are leakages, and you've only to allow 4% of the gas to leak, and you are now back as bad as burning coal, because methane is 25 times as potent a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide. Uh, so unless you take the leakages, which are, I'm told by industry people are largely unavoidable, into account, the, the gas advantage is not there. Nuclear waste really irritates me. 
it should not be a problem at all. In fact, it, as I think Hans Blixer said, nu nu the waste from nuclear is one of its great benefits. There's so little of it. When one thinks of the mountains, the invisible mountains of carbon dioxide, cubic miles of the stuff that we're dumping into the atmosphere every year and wrecking the planet, to fret about 10 cubic meters of, of nuclear waste, which is, I think, the total output of high-level waste in Britain since they started work, is absurd. It's ridiculous. It isn't a problem at all. I've offered, actually, to use my garden as a repository for the full output of a British nuclear power station. Unfortunately, nobody will take me up on it. I'm serious. I know that put in a decent concrete pit with uh, pipes to take away the, the excess heat from it, I could get free heat for my home and my swimming pool. It would be a waste not to use it. 